Would you connect your brain to the internet? In the not too distant future, you might be able to. But how is that even possible? The brain is the most complex organ in our body. It's composed of billions of cells called neurons, which send messages to each other and the rest of the body using chemical and electrical stimuli. There's still a lot we don't know, but over the past 50 years, our knowledge of how it works has improved immensely. And we've now created devices called neural interfaces that can listen and talk directly with your brain, helping us to learn about how the brain works and develop new technologies that specifically target its problems. Neural interfaces use tiny electrically conductive objects called electrodes, which detect changes in the electrical activity of our neurons. We can connect these interfaces to the brain by putting the electrodes in contact with the scalp using a headset or cap. But we can also lay them directly onto the surface of the brain below the skull or even implant them into brain tissue. Putting them below the skull requires surgery, so we only do this if the benefits outweigh the risks. Internal interfaces implanted through surgery allow us to hear and understand the brain's activity with great precision. It's like listening to somebody talking inside the same room rather than hearing muffled voices coming through a wall from next door. Some neural interfaces, such as cochlear implants or deep brain stimulators that help us to manage shaking in Parkinson's disease, are already widely used. We're also creating new implanted devices that aim to reduce epileptic seizures or allow paralyzed people to communicate or control prosthetics. And in the future, we're planning to treat conditions like dementia. More challenging treatments will require more advanced technology, which is why our research is focusing on developing devices that are smaller, smarter and longer lasting. Scientific knowledge of the brain and advances in microtechnologies promise amazing things. Not only will we be able to help restore lost brain functions, but also enhance existing ones. Like any new technology, neural interfaces pose ethical issues. These devices could one day be able to sense our thoughts and emotions, so people's privacy must be maintained. We're working with colleagues, policymakers, patients and their families to ensure our research is developed and applied with people and society's long-term well-being at its heart. If we could connect our brains to each other and to the internet, what would you like to do?